Welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa Caprio. Do you believe in magic? What if you were told that all you had to do was get a little creative and work a magic spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Here on Postcards to the Universe, we will share manifesting, tips, postcards, creativity, abundance, and prosperity. Here is your host, Melissa Caprio. Welcome to my new show, Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, Creating the Life You Crave. I am so excited to be here on Ohm Times Radio. So this is my second show. Uh, For those of you here for the first time, welcome, and thank you for joining me. Last week, I did a whole introduction on who I am and what I do, and if you're interested, you can, of course, listen to it in the archives. And, of course, welcome to all my friends and family who have been following me for a while. I so appreciate you. I have a really amazing guest this week, Reverend Gregory Postman, who I will formally introduce to all of you in a few minutes. Gregory is going to be a regular guest on my show, and I am very excited about that. He is a psychic trance channel, and we and he will be doing live channeling here on the show, so it's going to be really exciting. Okay, so I want to mention a few things first so we don't run out of time at the end. Like I said, Gregory's going to be channeling, so I don't want to cut the channel off as if I don't have to. So we're going to do all of this fun stuff in the beginning of the show. I would love it if you guys would follow me on my social media. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, Postcards to the Universe. Each week I share a Magic Monday message with an image that I photograph of a manifesting postcard or an inspirational message. I like to start my week with some positivity and put some good energy out into the universe. And you can also find them and all my links on my website, www.postcardstotheuniverse.com. And for those of you who are on Facebook and looking for an inspiring group to join, I have one. It's called Postcards of Love, and it's public. On it, anyone can share anything they want that is positive, fun, and interesting. It could be art, beautiful photography, inspiring stories, sweet animal videos, as long as it's positive and uplifting. No news, nothing about politics or this virus that we are dealing with. We get enough of that already. The group, again, is called Postcards of Love, so come on by and say hello. I have also written a book titled Postcards to the Universe, Harness the Universe's Power and Manifest Your Dreams, which can be found on Amazon and Barnes & Noble, and I'm going to read to you now the bio about the book. Learn to be a conscious co-creator with the universe and manifest what you want. Have you ever wanted a way to bend the ear of the universe, that is, the loving energy behind all creation? Yes, that universe, the one that renders absolute and perfect manifestation. Know that the universe hears what is in your heart. It hears exactly what you want for your greatest life. In Postcards to the Universe, artist photographer Melissa Caprio offers a way to combine art, love, and manifestation that will lead you to everything your heart desires. Lush with imaginative images and poignant with heartfelt words, this beautiful book is already igniting a creative fire and manifestors everywhere. We all wish. We are already good at wishing before we blow out the candles on our first birthday cake. We are wishing when we pull on a wishbone. We are wishing when we throw coins in a fountain. But then the wish is gone, rarely thought of, if ever. If, but, if you want, but if you had the universe's ear, where you could harness your own power, reach your full potential, and tap into your deepest creativity, what then? What would you ask for? Caprio photographs the postcards as she intuits it by each person's specific manifestation. Through art and photography, we get to see the desires of people manifest in the world, thus taking the law of attraction to a whole new level. So that sounds exciting, doesn't it? And I have a really big giveaway I'm doing. It has to do with my book, but it is so much more than just my book, and I'm going to announce it on next week's show. It's just in time for the holidays, and it really is a generous thank you to those of you who decide to buy my book. I mean it. It's big. So don't forget to tune in next week to find out all the details, and you're going to want to hear this. 
Also, I'm asking of you today to create a manifesting postcard and send it to me. The address to send it is on my website, and how to create a manifesting postcard is also on the website. It's the perfect time of year to do it. We're at the end of 2020 and going into 2021. What do you want to bring into your life? If you go to how, how it works on the Postcard to the Universe website and sign up for my newsletter, you'll get a free gift sent to your inbox on how to create a powerful manifesting postcard. And if you need help in creating one, just reach out to me and I am happy to help you. <clears throat> And next week on uh, October 21st, I have an amazing guest. Diana Silva of Mole Mama is a San Diego-based author, home chef, vlogger, speaker, and podcaster. Her book, Mole Mama, a memoir of love, cooking, and loss, shares the intimate journey of her mother's final 13 months. And she is calling everyone to return to their kitchens and to preserve their living and past ancestors' favorite recipes and stories for future generations. Every recipe has a story. All right, I got all my announcements out there. So now I'm gonna bring my awesome guest and friend, Reverend Gregory Postman. So a little about Gregory. Gregory channels over 40 light beings, including Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, as well as Master Teachers, Quan Yin, Mary. He also channels the Palladians, the Syrians, the Venusians. He performs workshops throughout the world and offers recorded channeled private sessions by phone. Each month he has a free channeled message that you can find at his website, www.gregorypossman.com. He and his sister, Leanne Mason, who's a medium, they clear buildings, land, and people of spirits and ghosts. And Gregory has led spiritual journeys to sacred sites in Thailand, Peru, and Mexico, England, Scotland, Egypt, and Norway, and more places. And he is, ava he is available for channeled workshops, private sessions, and channel evenings. Welcome, Gregory. Thanks for being here. I'm so excited. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have some fun. So Gregory's, Gregory and I have done stuff uh, together before, but we're in a new format. So a lot of people probably, you know, have never heard of you who are listening to me for the first time. So Gregory and I, and I met in an interesting way. Um, my whole family was traveling from Florida to North Carolina two years ago. Actually, it was almost exactly two years ago for my parents' 50th wedding anniversary. And I was looking for a reverend to surprise my parents with doing a vow renewal. And the universe aligned, and I was matched with Gregory, who did such a beautiful service. And then I come to find out he has all these special psychic gifts. And, of course, the rest is history, <laughs> right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So, um, Gregory, we're going to get, well, so what Gregory and I are going to do is for the first section, this section now, we're going to talk to Gregory and we're going to get a little background on you. And then when we come back from the first break, he's going to go right into a channel. We do not know, we're, we're going live with not knowing who's coming. So I have a bunch of questions, you know, general questions, and then we'll bring that one to a close. And then the third, t the, after the second break, we'll bring someone else forward and we'll channel some more. How's that sound? Sounds great. Looking forward okay. to it. <laughs> Me too. I can't wait to hear what they have to say. Okay. So why don't you share a little bit about um, what is exactly Psychic Trans Channel and, and, you know, how did you start doing this kind of work? I began in 1991, and I guess I knew that the creator wanted me to do something that I wasn't doing. And previous to that, I had believed that making a lot of money would make me happy. I found out otherwise. Uh, it created an awful lot of stress, and I was pretty successful in my eyes and the eyes of others, but I was totally unhappy, and I was very stressed. So I, I crashed. I, that's the only way I know to put it. I went through what I call two years of dark night of the soul and struggled tremendously with my Leo ego. And uh, I could say I got kicked to the curb, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> right? That's what kind of happens, so I, I think, before we go to that next step. We get kicked to the curb, right? I think it seems to be exactly. the way it works. Exactly. Thrown, thrown under the bus, kicked to the curb, who knows? There's lots of ways to put it. 
Right. Well, the bottom fell out. Let's put it that way. The bottom fell out, and I was uh, taken care of. I had everything I needed uh, except for the gratification that my ego wanted, and I was told that I could channel because I started exploring all kinds of different spiritual avenues, and channeling was one that I was pretty sure was totally, I was a skeptic. I didn't believe in any of, of it. And then I became one. So uh, I was told that this is something I had decided to do before I was born. And uh, as you said earlier, the rest is history. Um, it just uh, took off. And it only took me two years to believe that I was actually doing it. And uh, I think that the probably the most exciting part of it is, is now I feel very much fulfilled. I love probably 90% 90, 90 of what I do. I do perform weddings, and my wife is an ordained minister as well. We're non-denominational interfaith ministers, so we do a lot of weddings for people from different differing backgrounds, and that's very fulfilling. And then I, all the channeling work that I do, of course, is, is also, I, I believe it to be an expression of my soul. And I think that's what a lot of people are looking for. They're looking to express their soul and it takes a bit of stumbling through the through the, the the forest and the desert and wherever else you have to go, but it comes to us. And uh, I think that the interesting thing about it is, it does absolutely come to us from our soul, even after we have gone out and searched very hard to find what it is. It usually finds us. Mm. So that's uh, that's that's pretty much it. That's the story. That's the story. That's all she wrote, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's all she wrote. Oh, well, that's enough. <laughs> well, you, so the, you channel, um, I mean, you channel a lot of different, I mean, which I call them entities, I guess, because you channel archangels mm -hmm. and you channel um, spirit guides and teachers and you even channel uh, Venusians and we'll have to do, you know, something just on that one day, the Palladians and the Venusians and all those, those interesting characters. So it just, it just kind of like just one day, like you felt like something opened and some, somebody was just speaking like through you, like, how does it work? Um, well, the way it works now is different than it worked in the beginning. The way it works now, I just close my eyes and I feel a kind of energy. You, you could describe it as a frequency. Uh, my old teacher who just passed away recently, her name is Jenny, Jenny Wilson, and she would describe it as uh, a frequency that you would hear almost like a radio station. And if you turned the dial, the frequency would be different. I feel that energy in my shoulders and sometimes in the back of my neck. And now it's even faster. It's not even feeling the energy. It's just knowing who's there. There are new ones that come through on occasion, and that's a very different feeling. So hmm. it takes me a little bit longer to investigate whether or not that's an energy I want to come through me. Now, hmm. That's how it works. That's how it works for most of the energies that you've talked about, but I also channel ghosts or spirits, whatever you want to call them. Uh, that's always done with a great deal of respect. And what's different about that is when I'm channeling those spirits, they, I feel emotions. I feel their emotions. When I'm channeling what I'll call the higher vibrational frequencies, there's not an emotion, there's a, there's a kind, I don't know how to describe it, there's a, mm -hmm. a sort of, uh, there's no feeling, there's no emotion there, there's a, there's a sense of who they are, but there's not an emotion like sadness or, or happiness mm -hmm. or grief or whatever it might be. I do notice some excitement on their part. They tend to get really excited, and if you want to classify that as an emotion, we could say that's an emotion, I suppose, mm -hmm. but... Uh, they're, 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 they feel differently to me, but it's not a feeling of emotion. It's more a feeling of their frequency. And you it's very quickly. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. And sometimes I know who's coming through. And yeah, sometimes I know who's coming and sometimes I don't. And today we're going to be totally spontaneous and 
to see who shows That's up, cool. which will be a lot of fun. Yeah. We'll see who shows cool. up. Yeah, it's so cool. Well, there we'll talk about this on another show because I, I, you know, I want people to know you work with people privately too. So, what's the best way people can find you if they want to work with you privately? I suggest that they go to the website, which you've mentioned. It's gregorypossman.com, and uh, they can. <clears throat> there's no obligation. They can register on the site, which means that they'll have an account. There's no no fee for that. And then they can, if they like, on the face page, there's a thing that says book a session, and they click on that and can see the calendar, and the sessions are 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or an hour, and they can pick what they want. And then we do that either by phone, by Skype, or if need be, we'll do it by Zoom. So okay. it's a very easy process, and um, it's like a conversation with a friend. You're talking, you can ask any questions you want. Um, I always tell people if they don't want to answer the question or can't answer the question, they will tell you why. They'll tell you what the nature of the reason is. So that's, uh, that's the process for getting that. And um, the other thing that's on there is, is there, there's a lot of downloads. There's a lot of channelings that are on there. Many of them are, many of them are free. Uh, there's a channeling on there about clearing spirits. So if you've got a you know, Casper the Friendly Ghost is hanging out in your kitchen. You can go <laughs> online and there's a, a yeah, yeah. Well, you might want Casper to stay. I don't know. Yeah. You know he was pretty famous. No. Well, <laughs> that's so cool. So we're going to do our break now because I want to jump into the channel because that's going to be really exciting. So why don't we do that okay. and we'll come back in two minutes and we'll just go right into it. Stay tuned. Sounds good. Okay, welcome back. So, um, Gregory, there's a lot more stuff you do. So I think the next time you come on, uh, we'll, we'll talk about some of the spirit clearing that you do. Because I want to mention that too, but I really want to get into the channeling. So I don't want to focus too much on that right now. But since you're a regular, we can talk about lots of stuff over the next so many months, right? <clears throat> All right, so, so quickly, just tell people what you're going to do and then... You do your thing, and I'll start asking questions. I will close my eyes. I'll take a deep breath and just hold my breath for a moment, and that'll give the entity an opportunity to slip in, and it will introduce itself and speak, and that's about how it works. Let's, let's, here we go. Okay. We are the one who is called Hilarion, and we are grateful for this opportunity to merge with you. We are what you call an entity, a light being. We do not have a physical body as those of you who are listening to us have, but it is to understand that we have an appreciation for your experience as a human being. and. Again, we are most grateful for the opportunity to merge our energies with yours. What would you like to ask us? We know that you have a number of questions. Thank you so much for being here with us today. And my first question would be, what messages do you have for us at the moment? What, what is it that we need to hear? Your planet is in a process of cleansing. It is in a process of rebuilding. And therefore, one could say that your society is in the same process. In other words, since all things are united, all part of the one, so to speak, there is a process of what we are going to call destructuring and a process of restructuring. This is a process of preparation. And even though we speak of it as a global process, it is also a process for those of you who are individually interested in the outcome of your own life, so to speak. It is the perfect time to go inside. It is the perfect time to begin whatever spiritual practice 
you wish to begin anew, or it is a perfect time to involve yourself in some of your old practices, perhaps in a different way. And it is an excellent time to reevaluate life, to determine what it is that is your passion, what makes you happy, and to perhaps eliminate those things that do not make you happy, those things that you think you should do, those things that you don't really want to do, but feel obligated to do for one reason or another. And we do not wish for you to jump off the cliff, so to speak. We don't want you to change your entire life. You need some stability in your life, and therefore some things need to remain. But it is a perfect time to allow yourself to re-examine what makes the most difference in your life. What is the most important? What are the priorities, so to speak? And what better time to do that than a period of time where you are distancing yourself from others or not, a time where you have more time for this sort of introspection we are talking about. It is also an excellent time to explore some new activities, some things you have never done before. And we would like to add that doing that regardless of your age, is extremely important. It doesn't matter how many years you've been on the planet. It doesn't matter what is going on with your physical body or what isn't. It's a perfect time to reevaluate what is most important in your incarnation, your existence. That is our advice if we were allowed to offer any. I appreciate that. That was very, uh, very helpful. And to fo- as a follow-up um, from that question and what you said, 2020 has been a very interesting year. I think many of us were not expecting what is presented for us this 2020. So what is it teaching us? It is first teaching you about change. It is secondly teaching you about your own flexibility and perhaps even more important than both of those is the aspect of what we would call optimism. In other words, change is difficult for the human mind to accept. It's extremely difficult for the ego to accept. And yet it is a constant which is not news to any of you. All of you know that change is a constant in your life. The question, of course, is how deeply you fight that change. How positioned are you, so to speak? And then, of course, the question is, how flexible are you? How do you allow yourself to begin to think differently about the changes that you have No control over, seemingly. Although, we would also say that you do create your own existence. And in that process, you give yourselves permission to make choices. Sometimes the choices are not the choices you would prefer. In other words, I can do A or B, and I'm not particularly happy about either of them. Then, of course, the mind goes to a place that says, what is the least of these two evils? What is the best choice? And that choice leads to other choices. And those choices lead to a recreation of your life. And, as you have heard others from our side say, everything that you experience is a lesson. It is an absolute lesson. If you refuse to accept the lesson or whatever is fulfilling it, whatever is creating it, you will experience more and more of the same unpleasant choices. On the other hand, if you give yourself permission to learn the lesson, if you leave the relationship that is not working for you, no matter how difficult 
it may seem. If you leave the job that is not fulfilling for you, no, how, no matter how challenging that may seem, you are embellishing or embracing the lesson. And the drama that results may seem a bit difficult at first, but we can assure you it will ease up very quickly and you will begin to feel better about your life, not only emotionally, but also physically. Many of you are suffering from severe mental hardship as well as physical hardship. And many of those physical anomalies that take place in your body, they are the result of choices that you have made in the past that do not serve you well. That is what we call taking full responsibility for your experience. Thank you. That's very helpful. Um, so my next question would be, we feel very divided on this planet. Are we in a, a, a collective spiritual path? Are we all doing this together? Absolutely. You can't do it any other way from our perspective. However, it doesn't feel that way. It feels as though you are experiencing polarization, separation, and that the unity that we speak of is absolutely not there. But it is to understand that you are, shall we say, facing a type of adversity with the amount of illness and disease on the planet that is absolutely non-discretionary. In other words, the virus does not care who it infects or where it goes. And therefore, it has nothing to do with strata regarding economics. It has nothing to do with cultural beliefs or ethics. It has nothing to do with race. If one is human or animal, then it is entirely possible that the virus can, in fact, infect and how shall we say, perhaps disable an individual. Many, of course, have chosen it for their transition. They are using it to move into the other realm. And it would seem to us, although we may be wrong, but it would seem to us as though that would allow for a uniting amongst your populations. On the other hand, there are those who feel that this is not real. It is something that is born of some sort of conspiracy, as you would say. And therefore, mm -hmm. they are choosing to ignore it. Mm. Okay. That makes a lot of sense to me. So I have this question. Um, we see a lot of darkness on our planet. Uh, is there true evil? Are there people who are really evil? And if not, then why do they seem to do such evil things? Give yourself permission to think in terms of gradation. In other words, they, there are grades, so to speak, of frequency. And the lower frequencies are those who for whatever reason need to suppress those around them. There are those who, for instance, in order to build themselves up, of course, they must tear others down, so to speak. And there are those who are incredibly ambitious. They want to have more money, more power, more control. And control, of course, is nothing more than the antithesis of fear. In other words, those who have a great deal of insecurity or fear need more control so that they control the conditions around them and therefore do not have to face their fear. That is how we prefer to see it. You see it as evil. We do not see it as evil. We simply see it as a kind of pattern of behavior that is, again, a lesson. 
In other words, how do they learn not to fulfill their needs and desires by engaging in those behaviors? We make it seem perhaps a bit more sterile than it looks in the physical, and we're quite aware of that. But it's wise to remember we have no space and no time on our side. Everything that we observe on your side to us is a kind of pattern. We don't judge it as good or bad. We don't see it as evil or non-evil. We simply see it as a pattern, a kind of behavior. Hmm. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So it's just at a lower frequency and that's what they're Much lower. Mm -hmm. And... So it is wise to remember that what goes around comes around. In other words, if you live by the sword, you probably will die by the sword. If that's what you choose to surround yourself with, then you should probably be prepared to experience a great deal of it. Okay, thank you for that answer. So is it, is it true that we can really manifest anything that we want? And why is it such a difficult thing for us humans to grasp? It is difficult for you to grasp because you believe that you came into this life with some preconceived notions and condition. And therefore, to perceive the miraculous is quite difficult for you. In other words, a 77-year-old man who goes out and runs a marathon, that does not seem normal. It seems abnormal. But to him, who has opened to the miracle of his possibility of doing so, it's not abnormal at all. And when you use that word normal, you are, of course, deleting a tremendous number of possibilities. That is your choice, you can do so if you wish, but there is no reason to do so. And we do believe that whatever you can perceive, you can create. You do not have to do it alone. Oftentimes you need assistance. And that's another reason why it is so difficult for many of you to manifest. You think that you should do it alone and then refuse to ask for help. Example, if you do not believe in our existence, then you probably will not ask us for assistance. And sometimes we can't offer it until you ask. It must be your choice. But the moment you do, then we are absolutely at your behest. In other words, we are more than willing to assist you create whatever you wish as long as it serves the greater good. If it does not serve the greater good, then we are limited as to how much we can help you. Mm, that's a beautiful answer. Okay, quickly, because unfortunately we have time constraints here on this planet. How, what advice could you offer us as humans to love ourselves more? You must first forgive yourself because the Creator has forgiven you many, many times. Those of you who believe in a very vengeful Creator, one who seeks revenge for whatever wrongs you have done, that is the furthest from our truth as one can get. In other words, there is a tremendous amount of mercy offered you if you are willing to take it and to take advantage of it. So the first thing we would suggest is that you forgive yourselves. And the second thing is to increase your evaluation or estimation of self and believe in how much you can accomplish and believe in how valuable you are just because of whom you are. You and the Creator are one and the same. And both of you are just as powerful as the other. That physical body that most of you wear makes it difficult to believe that. But it is our truth. And we suspect you are out of time. 
I so appreciate it. Yes, we are. And thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a great honor and continues to be. So be it. So that was pretty cool, huh, guys? <laughs> All right. Well, when Gregory's getting himself grounded, we're going to take our second break and then we will be back in a couple of minutes for the next channeling. Welcome back. So that was pretty cool, wasn't it? Oh my God. That was awesome. Were you aware of what was being said through you or were you not even aware? No, no, not really. Um, yeah. Sometimes I can so hear mo some of it. But <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that you're like, all right, I'm just going to go make a sandwich while this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually, so, I, actually, I, I have to sit pretty, I have to sit I'm pretty sure, still. Yes. Yeah. I would think, yeah, to <laughs> hold the no connection. <laughs> right. Well, right. that was no so cool. So you'll have to listen to the archives so you can hear what, what was said. It was really great. So we're going to do another channeling. Do you know, have any idea who you think is going to come through now or same thing? Not a gonna... clue. Not a... All right. No, Whenever not you're ready, let's go. Okay. Here we go. We are the sixth seat of the Council of Shambhala, and we are known as Mira. And our background is one of a specialty in healing. And the reason that we have come through is because there are so many who are suffering on your planet. And it was felt by those in our council that it would be appropriate for us to speak. We are grateful for the opportunity. Well, thank you. I am honored that you are here. And actually, it's perfect because a lot of this segment I wanted to do around healing. So this is just perfect. So what would you like us to know right now about humanity? Is, are we in a wake-up call? Uh, what should we do for our own healing? Our first suggestion would be an extension of the word spoken by the one called Hilarion. And that would be to take responsibility for your experience. In other words, imagine whatever it is you might be blaming for your current circumstances, condition, or experience. And forget about whatever you have blamed it on and simply ask yourself what action might I take responsibly and accountably in order to change this experience be it physical mental or emotional what might I do if there is no answer presented begin to ask those around you whom you trust what you might do. And before you dispense with their suggestions, listen carefully to what they have to say because they are a reflection of you. Perhaps a reflection you do not want to listen to, but a reflection nonetheless, and that is important. That is where we would begin. Simple, yet effective. That's lovely. Can we call on our angels and guides for help? And do they send us signs? Absolutely. In other words, there are thousands of different ways that we can communicate with you through color, through sight, through sound, through memory, through music, through art, hundreds, thousands of ways, animals, plants, the animals that you see in the wild, they all contain a particular medicine, message, or energy. And if you begin to research that, you will see a certain synchronicity in the process. 
you will also find suggestions on what you might do differently in order to change your experience. We are not saying that if you are confined to a wheelchair, that you will walk in a day or two. We are not ruling out that possibility, but it is important to understand that all of this change begins within your own thought process, within your own emotional nature. And by changing either of those, you can totally change your physical experience. That is our truth. It is easy for those of you with a body to say, but you don't have a body. You do not know how powerful the suffering I go through is. And you are right. We do not know from our personal experience. We can, however, glean some of your experience. And therefore, we are able to some degree to understand what that suffering is like. All the more reason to become responsible and accountable for it instead of blaming another for its source, as its source, so to speak. Mm. So taking, taking personal responsibility is important right now. It is incredibly important. And it is also the key from our perspective in how to change your experience. Because we know that many of you are unhappy. You are not happy with the circumstances. Another possibility is to see the opportunities around you. You may not be able to go where you wish and do what you like, but there are hundreds of opportunities at your fingertips. And if you would give yourself permission to simply open your eyes to your own creativity, you would begin to see what those opportunities are. They are very close to you. And again, if you ask us for assistance, we will certainly offer it. Thank you. Well, I have to ask this question because I know it's on many people's minds. Why is this virus still here? And how much longer do you see us having to deal with it? Humanity will, in fact, create a vaccine. How effective it will be is difficult to say. We suspect that it will be effective for some and not so effective for others. Mm -hmm. Will it ever dissipate completely? We do not think so. In other words, its creation has to do with its opportunity to teach. And very few of you see it as an opportunity and few of you see it as a lesson. But if you stop and think for a few moments, again, in a responsible manner, you will see that there are just as many, if not more, positive results from it as there have been negative results. We do not deny for a moment that 99% of you are sick and tired of the limitations that it has presented for you. The man Ashid through whom we speak had planned a short trip. He is going to take a week off next week and he was going to go over and see a friend and received news that his friend had been exposed to the virus. His trip is now canceled. However, instead of kicking and screaming, as we might have expected from him earlier, he is beginning to look at how he can creatively use the time in another way. That is what we are talking about, and we do not for a moment mean to put him on some sort of pedestal. That is not the case. But after a year, almost a year, of exposure to all of this, because it is coming up on that period of time soon, it would make sense that you would begin to look at your life differently. It would make sense that you would begin to see your opportunities instead of looking at everything has a massive interference in your life. Mm. Life is replete with possibilities if one is capable of seeing them. Yes.
So what should we be doing to protect ourselves and our loved ones during this time? Needless exposure to this virus is, of course, the most sensible answer. Building your immune system is another. If you are smoking and drinking a particularly large amount of those quantities, they will definitely destroy your immune system quickly. We imagine that eating healthy food is a wise idea. But probably more important is keeping a very positive outlook on your life. In other words, allowing gratitude to completely allow itself to move through you. What are you grateful for? What do you have in your life that you treasure? Even about self, what gifts do you have that you do or do not share with others and with self that you can be grateful for? Many of you have incredible talents. Whether you use them or not, that is another question. But if you have not tried, then we suspect it is time to try something new and different and give yourself permission to see whether or not it's something that you truly enjoy. Listen to a different kind of music. Perhaps prepare a different kind of food. Or for some of you, prepare food for the first time ever. Some of you do not prepare food for yourself. What a wonderful way to love yourself, preparing yourself a nice healthy meal, actually taking the time and the energy to do so. You have time now, time that you did not have before. This is very true. And this follow-up question goes along with that so many people now are having severe depression because of being feeling that they are isolated how can we help those who are going through deep depression at the moment what is the lesson in isolation the lesson perhaps is that when one goes inside one has a sort of inert feeling of connection connecting to self first, connecting to one's creator, whatever one considers that higher power or energy to be, an opportunity to perhaps tune into the quiet or the silence. That does not have to breed depression or sadness. It can breed a form or a feeling of celebration. And that is important. In other words, believing for just a few moments of time each day that all of we are connected. We did not say all of you, we said all of we. We are connected. Take a few moments and read. Read about that connection. You have numerous sources that you can appeal to. Take advantage of them. Use them. They are very powerful. Whatever spiritual practice you think might appeal to you, try it. Give it an opportunity to see if it is in fact something that you enjoy. Meditate for 30 seconds if you have never meditated before. And the next day, 31, and the next day, 32. Gradually give yourself permission to move into this process. That will help you considerably in terms of your sadness and depression. That's beautiful. Thank you. And then the last question I'm going to ask you is, what can we do to help Mother Earth and all of the animals on our planet? Love it. What a simple answer. Take a moment right now, close your eyes. This will take very little time, we know we have little. And imagine love in the center of your heart as rose-colored light flowing down through the solar plexus, through the hips, down through the feet, through the soles of the feet, into the Earth Mother. And imagine the council of grandmothers, the council of grandfathers, 
by Wamus, the inner guardian of the earth, and the elements and the divas and the fairies. Imagine all of them exposing themselves to that love, finding gratitude for receiving it and breathe. It might have taken 90 seconds, but it is a tangible process that you can go through in order to change your experience and the experience of the Earth Mother. So be it. Thank you so much. That was so beautiful. I really felt that. <clears throat> Thank you for being here with us today. It is an honor. We are the sixth seat of the Council of Shambhala, and we bring you greetings and salutations. So be it. Wow. Thanks. That was so cool. <clears throat> Thank you, Gregory. <laughs> are You're you welcome. Back? <laughs> back again <laughs> oh my god that was so beautiful and I love the quick little 90 second meditation that we had it's just a great way to wrap things up and I'm so excited you're going to be a regular guest um, the next time you're going to be on my show is November 25th which is the day before Thanksgiving so you know we're going to focus on gratitude right <laughs> Um, well, gratitude and turkey. I hope we focus on turkey a little bit. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and if anyone, I want to put this out there. If anyone has questions for Gregory, please send me your questions and we can ask them on November 25th show. But, this is a but, make them general questions. We're not doing personal readings. If you want to do a personal reading with Gregory, you can find him on his website, GregoryPostman.com. Thank you so much, Gregory. This was a fantastic show. Thank you for listening to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa creating the life you crave and I will see you all next time have a wonderful week ciao